Morning, folks. All right, we've got people logging in rapidly. We should be able to have 500 people on this call, uh, but it is a little different than what I am used to. Uh, we are recording. So if for some reason you're sitting next to somebody who cannot get logged in, this recording will be made available after the fact. And let's see here. Okay, in Miss Fleming, we're working on getting you unmuted. I keep clicking mute all to mute the people who are jumping in. Uh-oh, interesting. Looks like our chimes stopped at 100. So that's concerning. Thought we could go to 500, okay. Um, yep, so apologies for those of you who are unable to join, even though you're not hearing me, if maybe you're hearing me as a speaker of somebody sitting next to you. Um, we are going to make this uh, as a recording available for you later in the day. So uh, fear not, we will make sure that this is available to everybody. Um, we are going to jump right in here. Um, myself and Ms. Fleming, so I'm, I'm Mr. Brandt, Dean of Pathways Learning. I can ask Ms. Fleming to unmute here. Let's see here. Hey, good morning, everyone. I'm Mrs. Fleming, Dean of College and Career Success. Thanks for joining us. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen here. We've got a presentation this morning for you about post-secondary readiness. And we've got uh, basically some resources for you and some information we'd like to share. So we're going to jump right in here. And you all can see my screen. Okay. All right. So post-secondary readiness. So I'm Mike Brandt, Dean of Pathway Learning. And this is Julie Fleming has just briefly introduced herself. You want to talk a, a little bit about what you do here? Oh, no, and she can't unmute. There we go. Thank you, Mr. Brandt. Yeah, it looks like you have to unmute me every time, but no worries. Yeah, so this is my second year at Vista Ridge. Um, I help students plan for after high school, whether that's college, the military, going directly into the workforce. Um, I do one-on-one -on -one advising with students. I work with our military recruiters. I work with college admission counselors all over um, Colorado and all over the country. And I love my job and I love helping students figure out what the next best step is for them. Um, so I really appreciate everyone taking some time this morning to learn about some of the opportunities that you have to learn more um, about whatever might be next for you um, and just some different resources we've got. So yeah, super excited to dive into it. Thank you. Yep. And so I'm the Dean of Pathway Learning. And so you're all most likely familiar with Pathways. And I also work with uh, work-based learning. And so we're going to talk about some opportunities for that later on. And I also work with the career and technical education programs here at Vista. So Mrs. Fleming, take it away. <clears throat> There we go. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah, so again, we'll just be covering some of your post-secondary options, um, how to plan for those options, some opportunities, um, just some timelines, you know, important dates that are coming up, you know, any recommendations that we have for you. And then um, Mr. Brandt and I both work really hard to create opportunities for students just to learn about their colleges and careers of interest to them. Um, so we're going to talk to you a little bit about some things you can start doing now even and a lot of things that will come up for senior year as well. All right, next slide. So yeah, so I'll start with college and career opportunities and then Mr. Brandt will um, dive into some you know, um, different opportunities you've got virtually, um, job shadowing, internships and, and things like that. 
All right, so I first wanted to start with like, maybe you're just not sure what you wanna do after high school. Super normal, a lot of students aren't sure what they want. There's, there's a lot of choices out there, so it's really hard to narrow down. Um, you can certainly review your career interests from U-Science. Um, I believe you took that either freshman or sophomore year, and I believe you can take it again if you're interested to see if your interests have changed. So Mr. Brandt can certainly help you log in and help you work through that process. Um, you can absolutely meet with me for one-on-one -on -one career advising. Um, I meet with students virtually or in person every day of the week. Um, and that conversation is really whatever you need. And I'll help get you the resources and information um, based on your interests. Another great opportunity you have is to interview someone in a profession that you're interested in. Um, maybe that will help you um, learn a little bit about does that certain career require um, different education or certification? How did they get to where they are? Maybe you'll learn a little bit about what they do during the day and then you're like, oh my gosh, maybe this isn't for me. Um, Mr. Brandt has some great connections for job shadowing and internship opportunities. Same thing, a day in the life of a job that you might be interested in. Um, is it really what you think it is? And is it really something you wanna pursue um, in greater detail after high school? And then we'll get into this a little bit more, but if you think you might wanna to go to college, um, because there, you know, there's over 5,000 colleges in the country, there's quite a few to choose from and they're all a little different. Um, so you want to learn as much as you can about the colleges of your interest um, by talking to college admission counselors. We do have college visits um, virtually right now where counselors come um, virtually to Vista on Fridays. I'll talk a little bit more about that. There's tons of college fairs available either in person or virtually. There will be some this summer next fall. Um, you can certainly visit college campuses, um, you know, with COVID, they're trying to be flexible and offer virtual stuff, but some colleges are open for business and you can do tours. Um, and definitely checking to see if your GPA and test scores um, where you're at are in line with the admission requirements or average admission data for colleges of your interest. Um, so just some things to think about if you're not really sure what you want to do, these, this might be a really good place to get started. Next slide, please. Okay, so we'll dive a little more into career planning. Again, you can um, log into your U Science, um, review your uh, survey results. Another one I do with students is called the ONET, O-N-E-T, and you can do that online, it's free, and it aligns um, different careers based on how much education you wanna get. If you want no education, if you're open to getting a PhD, um, can help you narrow down different options for you based on your interests. Um, again, those job shadowing and internship opportunities are really great um, so that you can get a day in the life of different careers that you might be interested in. Um, a lot of people in many professions are very open to having students um, job shadow them. And then you don't have to just talk to me about your career interests. You could certainly talk to your counselor, or if you're in concurrent enrollment, you can talk to uh, Mrs. Carter. Um, anyone in the Success Center front office would be willing to have career conversations with you and your teachers as well. Um, you know, the more information you can get from lots of different people, the, the better decisions that you'll make because you'll have as much information as there is. And I always tell students to do your research. Um, you know. The internet is a great tool. Um, colleges post all of their information online. Um, you know, you can look up for careers, different job postings that are online. Like say you wanna be, you know, um, a physical therapist. Well, what job postings are out there for physical therapists and what kind of experience do they want you to have? What kind of education? You can find all of that um, locally and statewide and nationally. Um, and so if there's a career you're interested in where maybe you don't need a bachelor's degree, but you need a certain license or certification, Pikes Peak Community College here in Colorado Springs has many certificate um, and licensure programs that you can complete in one year or less. Uh, oftentimes this is like for medical field, like if you wanted to be a CNA or a medical assistant or something like that, you're not getting a full um, degree necessarily, but you're getting certified, which is very important um, and then can open doors for education for you. Um, and any questions that are popping into the chat, we'll have Q&A at the very end and I'll go back in and answer your questions at that time. Um, and again, I'm more than happy to sit down and go through any, any of this with you, any of your interests. Next slide, please. Okay, military planning. So Vista Ridge also partners with military recruiters from every military branch that we have, Army, Navy, Air Force, et cetera. Um, you know, and 
typical years, they come to Vista once a, once a month um, and rotate opportunities to meet with students. It's been kind of weird this year with COVID. Um, however, they're willing to come um, to Vista to meet one on one with you if you're interested. You can meet at their recruiting station in Colorado Springs, or you can certainly talk over the phone about options. I've got the contact information for all of these people. And they really enjoy working with students and helping them decide if enlisting in the military um, is what you want to do after you get your high school diploma. Um, so if you're considering enlisting, um, we offer the ASVAB twice a year. So that's the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery Test. So that test is required for if you're considering joining the military right after high school with your high school diploma. Uh, that test um, is kind of a career interest test, but it also places you with compatible jobs um, for, the, for the military branches. And that's for all military branches. Um, so we offer that in March and October, and an, a sign up is always sent out to students a few weeks in advance. Um, so the next one will be in October, you just have to be 16 to test, um, and I assume you all would probably be 16 by um, at least October of next year. So that's a little bit about the enlisting side of things if you're joining right after high school, um, but there's also officers in the military. Um, so that tradition or that enlisted route is earning your high school diploma, taking the ASVAB and going to a recruiting station, that's enlisting. There's a lot of other programs where you can join the military as an officer um, through ROTC programs. So you could certainly go to a, a four-year college join ROTC and then you would um, commission as an officer after you get your bachelor's degree. What's really great about this option is they help pay your college tuition while you're in college. Um, so not every branch participates with every single college. So you would wanna do some research about what kind of ROTC programs exist at colleges of your interest. Um, so you do have to you know, exchange that for years of service after you graduate, but you would join as an officer. So that's certainly an option. Um, if you're thinking you wanna join the military, but maybe not enlist right away, you could certainly do that. Um, and then there's, you know, we're in Colorado Springs, we've got the Air Force Academy right here. Um, there's also Annapolis um, for the Navy, um, and then there's West Point for the Army uh, as military academies. That's another option to commission and join the military as an officer. Um, these are very, very competitive schools to get into. The application process is very extensive, um, and it's recommended if you're thinking about possibly doing that starting pretty much right about now, um, end of, of junior year with the application process. So if you're considering this as an option, please let me know um, and sign up to meet with me so we can go through that together um, and just review any of the questions you might have and help you get um, everything put together for that application. Next slide, please. And I did want to share, I know we will send this um, PowerPoint and presentation out to everyone um, afterwards. But I did hyperlink all of these resources in here for you. Um, because college can be kind of a, a large animal to deal with because there's just so many deadlines um, and different pieces of paying for college, just lots of different things to know. Um, so I've created all of these resources for students just to help you find the information you need. So I've created a frequently asked questions page about college um, that also hyperlinks to some other pages so you don't have to search on the internet for it. I've also created um, a college website for students to learn and there's also military and career information on that website as well. Um, but that's just links to different um, resources, opportunities, if I know of a college fair that's coming up through College Board or just all the different things that exist as an opportunity because there's so much out there. Um, it all lives on this website. Um, so save that, it's updated regularly um, and you can refer back to it anytime. I've also created a scholarship opportunities page. Um, these are what's called external scholarships. So they can be applied to pretty much any college in the United States or in Colorado, just depending on the criteria. Um, there's about a hundred opportunities on there, but it does save you the time of having to go and research things that um, you know, you're trying to figure out, is this legitimate? Is this what I'm looking for? So this gives you a place to start. Um, same thing, it's updated regularly. If edits are made, it's a live Google document. Um, so please save that as well if you're thinking about looking for scholarships. 
Um, and then we do um, regularly have college admission counselors come into Vista Ridge um, in traditional like non COVID years, they would come in person. This year, it's all been virtual. Um, but just so you all know, Texas A&M and University of New Mexico is coming virtually this Friday. Um, so if you're interested, th these are great opportunities, the colleges, the admission counselors give a presentation and overview of what their college can offer you, talk a little bit about maybe tuition and scholarships and student life, what you could expect if you um, go as a freshman, and then they open it up for questions. So I always attend those too, so that I've got information, but if you're interested in either of those colleges, you could certainly um, sign up, um, that's hyperlinked there as well, and that is, um, I believe the last for this year of what we've got, um, but they will sign up again next year. I think we had about 25 colleges come this fall and I anticipate maybe even more than that next year. Um, and some students, some colleges may opt to come in person next year and some may stay virtual. And then also next year, I'm hopeful we, we weren't able to do um, field trips this year with COVID, but I'm really hopeful we can start doing that again next fall. Um, hopefully maybe see Boulder, CSU Fort Collins, um, CSU Pueblo, uh, University of Colorado Denver, um, just kind of depends on the schedules of each of the colleges. So I will certainly send information on that if that's able to happen next year. Um, and again, that that's my sign up link to meet with me, um, sign up for an appointment either in person or virtually. Um, again, I've got appointments available pretty much every day. Um, so if you can schedule that when you have an off period or maybe a study hall if you're on campus, um, something like that, um, I can certainly make that work for you. And then again, just visiting college campuses and reviewing college web pages based on your interest, just to see what their admission criteria is and things like that. Next slide. So again, if you're considering college, there's a lot of um, dates and deadlines that I just wanted to mention, <clears throat> just to get you thinking about what maybe to plan for over summer. So most college applications are going to open around August 1st of senior year. <clears throat> Traditionally across the board, that's pretty much when they open for the next academic year. <clears throat> so you're applying August 1st <clears throat> for starting in fall of 2022. You are going to apply electronically through the college's web page. <clears throat> they usually make it really easy, excuse me, to apply. Um, <clears throat> they post like an apply now button. They make it as easy as possible for you to find. Or there's something called the Common app. This is a website that I believe it grows every year. They partner with right now, I think it's about 800 colleges. Um, so if you're considering applying to many, many colleges, the Common App might be a good option for you just because you apply, you send one application and it goes to multiple colleges. So if you're thinking of applying for maybe five or more colleges and they all participate in the Common App, um, might be a good option for you. Not every college in Colorado does. Um, some examples, I know UCCS does, CU Boulder, uh, Metropolitan State in Denver, CU Denver. Um, a lot of, some of the smaller like mountain colleges don't participate, <clears throat> but most of like the larger big colleges do. So those are your options for um, applying. Um, narrowing down your college list by July is a really good um, goal to shoot for. Um, if you're not sure how to narrow down your top choices, some things to consider, how far away do you want to live? Do you want to have to fly home? Um, do you want to be able to drive home in a day? Do you want to come home on weekends? Like what feels comfortable for how far away you're going to be? Um, super important, how much do you want to spend on college? How much, if you're going to borrow and take student loans out, how much money are you comfortable borrowing? Um, very important and colleges do post their tuition costs on their websites. Um, so just something to think about and we'll talk a little bit about, about um, more about paying for college here in a minute. Um, how big of a school do you want to go to? Do you want to go to CU Boulder where there's 30,000 students on campus? Does that feel comfortable? Um, maybe UCCS here in town where it's about 12,000 um, or maybe a mountain town, you know, uh, Western Colorado or Mesa um, where you're going to get, you know, maybe 5,000 students or so it's a bit smaller. And there's no right or wrong answer. <clears throat> it's just whatever feels right for you. And if the college offers the programs and majors that you're interested in. Um, definitely wanted to highlight that the second Tuesday in October, I believe it's October 12th this year, is called Free Colorado Application Day. 
So any application you submit to any college in Colorado is going to waive the application fee on that day. It's awesome. Just that one day only from 12.01 in the morning until 11.59 that night. <clears throat> so if you apply to five colleges in Colorado that day, all the application fees will be waived. It will be free. Typically, they're about $50 on average. So that can save you um, quite a bit of money if you're thinking about applying to multiple colleges. So I always advertise that. I'll send information to you. It'll be posted on my website. Um, the state hasn't released the official official day, but it should be October 12th, um, but we should know more this summer. So definitely a great opportunity um, for every student, you know, if you're considering staying in Colorado. Um, I get a lot of questions from juniors about um, searching for scholarships. Most scholarships aren't going to open until about November of your senior year, um, but you can certainly search for them, bookmark them, save them for later. That external list I talked about earlier, um, you can bookmark anything from there you're interested in, but majority aren't going to open until, you know, halfway through your senior year on average. And then I linked back to that <clears throat> scholarship page here as well. Um, so that might be a really good thing to do over summer is to start researching those scholarships. Um, and each college is going to have their own scholarships as well. So you can certainly research on their college web pages <clears throat> what kinds of scholarships they offer to students. Um, and I definitely wanted to mention, you know, the difference in community colleges versus four year colleges. Um, Colorado has a great transfer agreement um, policy with community colleges and four-year colleges. So let's say you decided to go to Pikes Peak Community College for two years and transfer to UCCS, work with an advisor. And as long as you're taking guaranteed transfer classes, and many and most are, um, all of your classes will transfer over as long as you stay you know, working on the same degree you were working on at the community college. It's a great option, save students some money when they do things this way. Um, and oftentimes, you know, community college feels a little more comfortable right out of high school. So that's certainly an option for you. Um, and same thing if you wanted to go to a community college in Denver, or Fort Collins, or in the mountains, or, you know, just wherever you want to go. Um, same thing, you could transfer that to a, a state college. Doesn't work as well with private colleges like Colorado College or uh, Regis, but our state, um, you know, public universities, it's a really great partnership that they have. Um, and if you're considering this, I'm more than happy to sit down and talk about that a little bit more with you. Um, and this is why our concurrent enrollment program can be so powerful because students can take those classes on to um, public state four year colleges after graduation. Next slide, please. Another question I get quite a bit, of course, is, you know, paying for college. So I did just want to break down um, what that looks like and what your options are and some tips and suggestions for this. So traditionally, there's four ways um, to pay for college. There's grant money, which is free money like a scholarship that's usually based on financial need for the most part. Then there's scholarships that's free money, uh, usually based on academic merit, financial need or having a special skill or ability. Um, Students, you know, ask about that a lot. We've touched on that a bit. Um, and loans, um, of course, that would be what I recommend students search for absolutely last after exhausting every, every other option they have. So loans must be paid back with interest, um, but certainly is a good option for students who are needing to borrow money um, to pay. And then work study is basically working on a college campus for an hourly wage um, while you're in college. Um, those are all four ways you can combine any number of grants, scholarships, loans, or work study to help pay for your tuition. You can also pay out of pocket for college. Um, if you want to work your way through college and pay semester by semester or set up a payment plan with a college, you can absolutely do that. And again, most scholarship applications open in fall of your senior year. And, and if you're admitted to five colleges, you can apply for scholarships to every college that you're admitted to. Being offered a scholarship doesn't mean you have to go there. Um, every student is given until May 1st of their senior year to decide what college they wanna go to, as long as you didn't apply to a, a unique university that has a, a different timeline, but that's, they would tell you when you're applying if you're doing what's called a early decision. So the FAFSA application, very important. This is your one-stop shop. This is where you wanna start the financial aid process. If you're wanting to look for grants, for loans, for work study, this is where you wanna start. It opens October 1st every year. 
Um, it's the free application for federal student aid. This is how colleges are going to determine how much funding they give you to go to their college. So you want to send this report to every college that you're thinking about applying to. And, and again, that will help the college determine how many grants you get, the loans, the work study. Um, <clears throat> and a lot of scholarship applications require that you have done this um, so they can see your report. So even if you don't qualify for anything, it may help with um, finding scholarships, it may help with student loans. And I, you know, at the end of senior year or after you get your, your report back and it, if it doesn't make sense to you, I can sit down with you and kind of help you work through what it means um, and, how to, and how to interpret maybe each college's offer to you. So I strongly encourage every student to do this. You'll apply every year, but for now, for senior year, you would apply in October. So just another important date to mark. Um, you do have some time to do it. it doesn't have to be completed on October 1st. Um, you can complete it at any point, but free money is first come first serve. So the earlier you do it, the absolute better. Next slide, please. Um, and I believe this is what I've got last for you today. Just wanted to mention your credit requirements for graduation and to compare. So on the left-hand side is the Vista Ridge graduation requirements. And on the right-hand side is what's called HERE recommendations. So this is the higher education academic recommendations. So if you're considering going to a four-year college, that's what's recommended you have completed. Again, this could differ from college to college. It could differ based on the major you're interested in. The thing I've seen differ the most is the foreign language requirement. Um, again, happy to sit down and, and look through any college's um, admission criteria or requirements with you, but this is the general recommendation from the state of Colorado. VISTA sets you up pretty well for this because as, as you can see, you pretty much have that all completed other than probably needing one more year of math potentially. Um, so that would be taking another math uh, class next year. So to graduate from Vista Ridge, you need 24.5 credits total, and that breaks down how you can earn those. Um, a lot of students graduate with many more than that, um, but that is the requirement. Um, Mr. Brandt, do you have anything you want to add to this? Um, <clears throat> excuse me, not really. Um, yeah, I think basically it looks, looks pretty thorough. Oh, we got a typo in the word foreign. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I can add. Uh, but yeah, um, just uh, just to emphasize the requirements to graduate from Vista Ridge and the requirements that some colleges are going to look for aren't exactly the same. Um, so just be mindful of that when you're looking at those schools. Absolutely. Awesome. We can go on to the next slide. All right. All right. So I'm going to share about a couple resources. We've got a couple online platforms that are available to us. And so I'm going to dive right in. Uh, <clears throat> so there is a platform called Tallow. This is <clears throat> for those of you who have been in pathways in previous years and built a digital portfolio in Google sites. This is what we're kind of migrating to <clears throat> as a district. So I'm going to stop sharing here. And I'm going to share a new screen. <clears throat> so this is Tallow. And it has the functionality of Google Sites and the digital portfolio. However, it also connects directly with colleges and industry for various opportunities, including scholarships and work-based learning, such as job shadows and internships. <clears throat> so I built a test profile as an example, so I'm, I'm right now logged in as a student. Get something popping up here about an opportunity. Let's save that for later. <clears throat> you can see here where it says my profile is 100% complete. So in the process of creating this profile, they're usually up kind of on the you know front and center is kind of a, like a checklist. And as you work your way through that checklist, you'll see you'll, you're 10%, 20%, you know, on and on until you're 100% ready with your profile. You can add a photo of yourself. You can also record a brief introduction video. So um, my name is Mike Brandt. I'm the Dean of Pathway Learning, yada, yada, yada. Basically how I introduced myself at the beginning of this call. And then you drop that on YouTube and you can then link that YouTube URL here. There's a opportunity for you to list out different career interests. 
location preferences and your sort of pathways options. So you can declare, you know, military, two year, four year school, direct workforce, um, whichever you prefer there. There's an opportunity to write a small, I think it's 255 character biography, so very short. You can list college majors if you're interested in that. Similarly, specific, uh, you know, higher education organizations that you're interested in, if that is your career path. Badges, we're not really using that function right now. You can list out all your extracurriculars and sports and hobbies and everything in there. Work experience, if applicable. Special accomplishments, your education. When it comes to things like GPA, if you're proud of that, or with your test scores, again, if you're proud of those things, you go ahead and list those. If you're not, you don't necessarily have to. That's totally up to you. If there are specific courses that you feel like are you know, related to your career path and something that you're really proud of, you can list those as well different languages. And then here at the bottom is where it becomes a lot like the digital portfolio on Google sites that we would have done in Pathways in the past, where you can add files and you can link them directly from Google Drive. And so that's where if you had like a really excellent essay that you wrote in English or a great presentation from your civics class or something like that, you can link those right on there. So um, now, so that's more or less what you add onto it as a digital portfolio. And then when it comes to the opportunities piece, let's see here actually, okay, so here's where you can search out different um, conferences, presentations, internships, um, you know, connections with industry and colleges, uh, virtual college visits, everything like that. And then in your dashboard, you can see right now here the match amount based off of the information that I've added onto this, and mind you, I'm, I'm sort of pretending as if I were a high school student getting ready to graduate, so my information isn't totally accurate, but um, the more information you put on here, the more it will match you with scholarships. And so this is a added feature above what we were able to do with Google Sites that we can actually go in and see different opportunities that are based off of the information I've added on there. So it's a pretty great platform. Um, all you need to do to get set up with Tallow is go to tallow.com. And if you go to sign up, you can actually log in directly with your D49 Google account. Oh, I'm already logged in, so it's not, not showing me that. Let's go ahead and log out. Try that again. So when you go to, um, you, when you get to the sign in page, you'll see sign in with Google. And then you can just select your Google account and you basically already have an account. So that should be an easy way for you to get set up with that. Once you graduate, you can sign into Tallow and you can associate it with a personal email. So <clears throat> when your District 49 account gets shut down, you can still have access to Tallow. And so just a, a great resource there. Again, if you have questions on any of that, I'm more than happy to meet with you in small groups or one-on-one. -on -one. You can also drop those questions in the chat now. We will do our Q&A at the end. Uh, however, now we're gonna shift gears over to the PPBEA. So the Pikes Peak Business and Education Alliance is our work-based learning marketplace. So. With this in mind, if you're interested in doing some career exploration in the form of interviewing people in a career field you're interested in, job shadowing, internships, anything along that continuum, this is our go-to. So ppbea.org, both of these uh, links for Tallow and PPBEA and a link to the slideshow will be in the description. We'll post this on YouTube and share it out with you guys. Let's go ahead and go to sign in. And I'm signing in as an admin, but it is, a lot of it's pretty similar to what you would see as a student. Um, so you make an account on here. And when you have made an account on here, there is going to be the user settings. You know what? Let me sign in as a student. Just kidding. This would be even better. 
Okay, so, um, so this is what you'd see logged in as a student. If you go to manage user settings, uh, it should be like a little pencil. Okay, it wants me to update my password. Okay. All right, well, <laughs> normally you can manage your user settings and there's a little pencil over here, at which point then you have to go and enter information about who your parent is, uh, your school-based sponsor, which will be me, and there's a drop down after you select Vista Ridge High School, you'll see an option for school-based sponsor and you can select Mike Brandt. Uh, that will connect us on this. And then when we are all set up, you can go to Browse Opportunities. Okay, and you can sort. So if I wanted to arrange a class presentation as a teacher, that's something I would do. Um, as a student, you could look at, typically we, we talk about starting off at the, you know, entry level of the continuum with <clears throat> the EWBL. So this is, let's, let's go ahead and skim through here. Okay. Computer security, student story, operations manager. Okay, cybersecurity and law career interview. So EWBL is a pre-recorded career interview with somebody in this in, uh, industry. So this is uh, basically going to be a video of somebody who works in cybersecurity. It gives you a little bit of a, a bio about them. <clears throat> Uh, it does link to the ONET <clears throat> and talks about career forecasts, as Mrs. Fleming had mentioned a little bit earlier. And why is this being funny? I mean, normally there's, there should be a link to apply uh, where then you would get a link to actually watch the video. So um, they did just run an update on the site and it does seem that there is a couple funny things going on. So that's not great. Uh, let's see, early childhood education. No applicant yet. Strange. Okay. Um, well, interesting. All right. There's a little glitches here, but I'll reach out to them and, and make sure we can kind of get that sorted out. But effectively, we, we would recommend that you start off with the EWBL and you watch a short video of somebody in the industry kind of talking about their career path, how they ended up in this place in life, and what a day in the life of their career looks like. The next step, we'd have you move on to a job shadow. <clears throat> so let's say that you're interested in automotive, accelerate automotive. So here you get a kind of a sense of when they're open, uh, what the job shadow might be. It's about four hours long, age requirements, all these different sort of requirements. And then normally there should be a spot down here where you can apply for the opportunity. And then they're going to go ahead and make those introductions and get you set up with the um, job shadow. And after you've done the virtual and then you've done a four hour in person or sometimes, you know, COVID pending, uh, sometimes that involves you actually just zooming with them for four hours and then, you know, walking you around the shop uh, or, you know, business. Then that's when we move into the more advanced end of the curriculum where you are going to jump into an internship. Internships are where you spend 60 to 120 hours at the work site. You're doing hands-on learning. You do earn 0.5 credit practical arts for doing 60 hours internship, and you can earn a full credit for doing 120 hours. Just for reference, a 60 hour internship comes out to about four hours a week during a semester. So if that's something you could work into your nights and weekends or potentially even in your schedule, depending on, you know, if you had your internship the last or the first period of the day, you could definitely help kind of piece that out. And go ahead and check out this one. So some of them, not all, but some of them do have a $500 completion scholarship. So you can get paid to learn on the job. So this is just a, a resource. Again, apologies for kind of, I'm not quite sure what's going on with the inability to, oh, apply. Okay. <laughs> Expanded profile. 
Let's, the apply button's up here now and it's not working, but we're, we're gonna start that out. Uh, this is a fantastic resource. If you do apply to this, I will get a notification uh, and that'll basically make me your school-based sponsor. Uh, you will have to add some parent information and connect your parents with the account as well. So they have to be looped in on all of this. Uh, you will be covered by the school's um, insurance during the work experience. So uh, you're you know, safe on the job site. And that is about it. Um, so ppba.org. We'll drop that link in the description and share that out with the recording of this video and the presentation and the link to Tallow. So I think now we'll go ahead and switch over to Q&A. Uh, and just again with Tallow, PPBA, either of those things, if you are interested in learning more, or you need some more one-on-one -on -one support, please feel free to reach out and I'll include my email link in the description as well. So let's go ahead and pull up to the chat. This is Fleming. There's a question about the SAT and a response from a student. Do you want to speak to that? Yeah. Um, so the if my SAT score does not match the college requirements, should I take the SAT again? It's a great question. It depends on how close you were to the score um, and you know other factors as well. Like is your GPA higher than what they typically are asking for? Um, do you have a strong letter of recommendation that could balance it out? Um, so if it's much, much lower then perhaps yes, but if it's pretty close, we can look at some other things and see if it's necessary. Often if they, if you were ended up denied from a college, you could resubmit SAT scores and have them reevaluate. Um, so I, you know, I always want to save students as much money as possible <clears throat> and it does cost them money to take the SAT again. So we can certainly look at that together and I would evaluate some of your other application materials too, um, as well. And let's see, colleges will take your highest SAT score, correct? If you didn't get the score you wanted or needed, you can take it again and colleges will take the higher score into consideration. But if you take the SAT again, but you did worse, that's fine because the college will take the previous score because it's highest. Colleges only know what scores you send to them. So if you take it again, you would have to submit your scores. So if you scored lower, you just wouldn't submit it. But if you score, take it again and score higher, you could certainly send those off to them. But they only know the scores that you have submitted to them officially from, uh, from your own college board account. Uh, how many schools should I apply to? That's a great question. Um, typically research recommends three to five, um, maybe one like safety school, you're very certain you'll get into maybe a reach school where you're not quite meeting the admission criteria, but you're very interested in it. Um, but it really depends on how many colleges there are out there that you're interested in pursuing. Um, you know, and once you're accepted again, you would have an opportunity to apply for scholarships and things like that. So it doesn't hurt to cast a wide net and see what happens, but three to five is probably the average for students. Uh, Mr. Brandt, would you like to take the next question? Yes, so uh, Clara is asking about graduation requirements changing slightly from last time she checked the VRHS website. So there are new graduation requirements that are going to impact the class of uh, 2022 you guys. Um, specifically with the topic of mastery, that is something where there, there's um, some plans in the work that are kind of happening quite above my head. And with that in mind, we are going to have more information for you in the coming weeks, but we don't want to share about that quite yet because we want to make sure after some decisions have been made uh, that that information is most accurate. Uh, so, and, and I'll let Ms. Fleming uh, touch on the topic of credits, but in regards to mastery, there is a lot of information on that that we're just not ready to share. So what I will ask is that at some point in the next few weeks, if you get an invite to another meeting such as this, um, and the topic is mastery, please, please, please do attend. This period after, you know, SAT is over, last week and kind of moving forward with uh, this sort of being our official last meeting, 
we will have one more meeting during pathways before the year is out that is going to be real critical so if you do get an invite for that on the topic of mastery please do join um, for the requirements on credits i'm going to pass that off to mrs fleming yeah uh clara i if you could send me the link to that i'd like to see it i know that there were um, some modifications just as an exception for COVID stuff for this year, but that was just for class of 2021 only. Um, the, and as far as anything else, I don't believe there's been an, any other changes. Um, I know that Pathways, you know, was decided to be 0.5 credits, but I don't think that there's any other changes that are going to impact your class for next year. But if you could send me that link, I'm going to put my email in the chat um just so i could take a look at that and make sure that there's nothing um additional that you know we need to go and modify the website or something like that um, and if any of you have any questions for me that is my um, email address i think there was a slide that um was missing but certainly if you have questions about if you're on track for graduation um or your credit summary um, you can sign up to meet with your counselor to review that. Every student has a credit summary where every class you've taken is, you know, put in a category so that you can make sure. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Brandt. So this is, again, will be sent to you and you have access to this. Um, so yeah, you can sign up to meet your, with your counselor advisor that links to everyone's sign up pages. I know we've kind of moved to that a little bit with COVID, but it seems to be working really well for students to sign up for appointments. You can always also come down to the counseling office and meet with one of our secretaries, Mrs. Gonzalez or Mrs. McPhail. They have access to everyone's calendars as well and can get you scheduled for an appointment if you're in the building and just want to pop in and, and sign up. You could absolutely do that. Um, and then again, you can sign up to meet with me to go over anything. Um, but yeah, to update your credit summary, that would be something that you need to work with your counselor on. Um, and you're, as juniors, your counselor is Mr. Steven Anderson. Um, so his appointment scheduling link is in there, or you can sign up to meet with him through our secretary at the counseling desk, absolutely. Um, but yeah, so that's definitely certainly important as well. I know many of you are off campus and I wanna give you all enough time um, to get to the building for fifth period this morning. Um, and Mr. Brandt has put his email address in there as well. If you have questions for either of us, we're happy to help you, whatever we can do. Um, are there any last questions before we all close and you all can get into the building this morning? Um, and I, I'll stay on for a few minutes if anyone would like to ask something, um, you know, one on one or privately before they, they close as well. But um, uh, Christiana, um, unfortunately, I don't think students have access to do that on their side of things in PowerSchool, but you could always email your counselor or email me and we can look that up for you or even send you a copy of your unofficial transcripts just so you have a record. Um, it's Your GPA is only gonna change once, semester, once a semester, once your um, final grades get posted. Um, so usually like January, it'll update, and maybe June, it'll update every year. Um, but I would work with a Success Center staff member for support with that. No Good problem. stuff. All right. And so um, we are going to wrap here, but I've, I've shared my email there. We will reach out again uh, with this information as a kind of a follow up. If you do need any help with anything individually, uh, just as Mrs. Fleming had shared, you can reach out to me directly or you can come and see one of the counselors up in the Success Center and drop an appointment on my calendar. So thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we are going to go ahead and stop the recording now, but uh, myself and Mrs. Fleming will stay on here for a few minutes if there are a couple questions and we'll allow folks to unmute themselves as well. Have a great Thank day. You.